Welcome to GathCast, episode 57. I'm Dr. Sanders. I'm Cameron. It's Cameron. You might have heard him on the last episode. Yeah. In the uh, rigs section, random interesting gas stuff. In case you don't know Cameron, he is the drummer and co-songwriter, co-co, because we have Jacob as well. Yeah, one of the three. I'm one, one of the three stooges. One of the three main members of the Dr. Sanders group. There we go. Of the three. <laughs> <laughs> of which there are. The band Dr. Sanders. Yes. We have a band. Uh, that's Cameron is, but obviously he was on the last episode. He's a creator oh. of things. I guess you could say that, yeah. Many things. Anyway, we'll get to know Cameron, obviously, throughout this episode. But this is Cameron's first full episode on here. That doesn't mean Brian, I won't do episodes with Brian or anything like that, but... uh. Cameron wanted to do an episode, so... Yeah, especially yeah. on a, a band that I'm very familiar with. Exactly. fond of. And speaking of the band that we're tackling this week, you probably saw it in the title. You're probably very confused. You're bewildered. Chilled, thrilled, and fulfilled. It's the Misfits. They walk among us here. You know, it's the age of them. You could say the static age you could. of the Misfits. You watch them with 20 yeah. eyes. Was it BC or AD? Earth AD? Okay. Earth, yeah. yeah, we'll get to it. <laughs> we already don't know what we're talking about. They may be asking, what the heck? This is Gothcast. You cover goth bands here. Well. I'm here to throw a wrench in things. Well, you're you're not wrong. <laughs> uh, but, you know, we have covered bands that are not necessarily goth bands, you know, but just bands that people really like that, yeah. you know, pretty much. I think some of the imagery also crosses over a lot with the Misfits, just yeah. kind of the horror imagery. Absolutely. I mean, think about it. We've done Marilyn Manson. We've done Depeche Mode. We've done probably some other one I can't remember that's probably pretty important. But, you know, the Misfits are a band that I think probably you ask, I would say, 80% of Goss, hey, do you like that band? And they're like, oh, yeah, this song. And they start singing right. one song. And they're like, you know, people don't necessarily think of them as just a goth group. And also, there's a big question, right? What is their link to death rock? I mean, I know people call it horror punk. Right. That's what... That's, that's what I've always known them as. Yeah. And so Misfits are considered horror punk. And there's always been this weird thing where people are like, well, what about like 45 Grave? You know, like they sing about weird spiritual demonic things and all this and like zombies and they are in like their music's in Return of the Living Dead. And are they horror punk or like what is like how does Misfits and horror punk relate to death rock and stuff? It, to me, it's it really comes down to that punk aspect of it. Like, yeah, yes, Forty Five Grave has some very hardcore punk stuff, especially when you listen to, like Autopsy and all the stuff that was more raw from them. Um, I think Sleep and Safety, you have a little more of that slowed down kind of rock sensibility to it. And uh, by the way, it's a great book called Phantoms. Uh, Phantoms, Who's yeah. I? Uh, I forget who the author is, but it's basically like an oral history and interviews of a lot of the bands for death rock and stuff oh, okay. it's really good but it, they kind of talk about it in there how like the album sleep and safety and stuff got a little more like studio-esque version of them and then they had autopsy which is a little more raw and more actual punk interesting um but i think like especially when you listen to like misfits and you listen to like christian death or something like that you're like okay there's a big difference between yeah. these two <laughs> like yeah it's just in terms of, like song structure and stuff but you know it's people really Kind of unanimous, unanimous, yeah, oh man. People no. kind of really unanimously, unanimously there we go. <laughs> <laughs> agree that horror punk is not really goth music necessarily. No, it's its own thing. Yeah, and I think it is because of that thing of where it just skews a little too much towards the punk aspect of right. it. Right, and I think that's where you get the link because there is crossover, but it does lean more towards punks. Like I know, I don't know, I, I, like every single show I go to, there's always some dude. I'm usually one of them but like with a misfits patch on their battle oh, yeah. jacket or wearing a misfits shirt or having a tattoo of something like that so i mean yeah exactly this is oh by the way just in case you haven't seen camera before if you do watch the dr sanders great matter trial music video he's a guy with the big mohawk yeah so. i think i'm wearing a misfits shirt in that video yeah all right cool it's perfect then. <laughs> but uh yeah so let's get on with it i yeah. mean that's probably what people warning is like why are you covering this band because they're cool. Because they're cool. They're awesome. They're, they're cool. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we're going to start with some of the history here, as we always do. So Misfits formed in 1977 in Lodi. Lodi. New Jersey. Dang. That's how you say that. It's L-O-D-I. So Lodi. Lodi. Jersey um, band, East Coast. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, man, they are very East Coast. Yeah. When you hear any of them talk, you're just like, 
Okay. These guys are. I feel like, especially like Jerry only. Like, oh. I've heard like interviews with Jerry only and stuff like that. You can just hear the jersey in them. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's right. I'm getting on the subway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> what it is. It's like, <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, by of course Danzig, Glenn Danzig, and of course the the classic lineup that we all know that we're gonna be talking about through most of this is gonna be. Glenn Danzig, Jerry Only, and then Doyle Wolfgang von Frankenstein. By the way, their real names are Glenn Allen Anzalone. It's Glenn Danzig. Okay. Jerry Only is Gerald Kaifa, C A I A F A Jr. Oh, weird. That's and then, such a weird spelling. And then Doyle, his real name is Paul Doyle. Same same thing. So okay, because they're brothers. Ah, uh, that's who you can. Like most people consider, like, oh, if it has at least those three members, that's pretty much the Misfits. The Misfits, yeah. Of course, the the name came from Marilyn Monroe's final film, The Misfits, uh, from 1961. We're not covering all the EPs and the tiny releases and singles and stuff. That would be really hard with The Misfits. I mean, if you guys want like a breakdown of every single thing, I mean, I'd, I'd probably have to do a video or something like that because there's so many little singles and EPs and one-off things that were done with this band. Because they were just like a really scrappy band that made it kind of big in the punk world and stuff like that. So I'm yeah. assuming they didn't get like too much of a budget or anything. So it's just like small little releases everywhere. Yeah. Well, especially in the beginning, it was like, it was really a struggle for them to earn money. Uh, I guess like most bands, you know? Any punk band. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just... It's kind of marred by that a little bit because the band is way significantly more successful uh, later in their career and that was a lot be- one of the big thing was that Danzig's solo career took off then there was so much of an interest in the previous work because um, even in Samhain and Samhain's and that's how you actually say the band the name Samhain that's I know it's spelled S-A-M-H-A-I-N yeah and people say Sawin or whatever but the band itself calls it Samhain so I did a video and a whole were like you said that name wrong I'm like, <laughs> no, I didn't. I'm like, I'm like that's what that band says <laughs> <laughs> Um, but as Danzig got more popular, there was a much more of an interest in the old stuff that he did before. And of course it's great music. So it really helped yeah. that people go, the, you know, go back to look at it. And then of course, uh, you have like Metallica and Guns N' Roses and stuff covering there's the, totally. the huge arena rock bands covering, covering Misfit songs. Yeah. yeah. And so it became even more of an interest for that, especially like Last Caress. I think probably more people for a long time, only knew the, the Metallica version. Yeah, uh, I think they did a cover of uh, Die, Die, My Darling as oh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. which I remember I was watching a TV show and they referenced Die, Die, My Darling. They were like, oh, nice, Metallica. And I was like, I mean, yeah, but more like Misfits. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so that's one thing you got to remember about the Misfits. And so a lot of these singles and stuff, like they, um, we're going to talk about with Static Age and stuff, mm-hmm. where like they would record an album and then they couldn't get like funding. Definitely had to negotiate for a lot of things. And, and then they split up and did like a lot more singles as a result of that. Like it was just more of a budget thing. Like, oh yeah, we can print a smaller run of like a, a smaller, actually physically smaller record. Anyway, let's get into some of the things here. So the way we're covering the albums is not the way that they were released. Not at all, actually. We're covering them in basically the order that they were recorded because they really only ever did two albums when they were together. Like they got, well, really only one. Uh, yeah. Only Walk Among Us was released while the band was together, recorded, everything released, um, and then Earth AD, I believe, was released two months after they broke up. Interesting. I think that was right, or uh, something either two months before they broke up or after they broke up, but it was... It was uh, right on the cusp of yeah. them just dissolving, yeah. And so Walk Among Us was the only one that they really had the time to do, like, the full thing. such a good thing. album, dude. It's great. I love it. <laughs> um, but we're going to talk about Static Age, Evil Live, Walk Among Us, and Earth AD slash Wolf's Blood. Yeah. Um, and so the idea being that this is the order they were recorded in. Static Age, their first album, was like recorded in the 70s, and then it was shelved and picked apart over the years for it's compilations. Sat, it sat on a shelf for like 20 years or maybe yeah. not 20, but it, it was something. It was a long It's almost 20 years, yeah. Yeah, and some of the songs had like never been heard before, be- like until they released it, and they were like, whoa, here it is like, yeah. in its original form. Exactly, and we'll talk more about that when we get to Static Age. But um, so we're doing it in order of like, the thing so like even the live album so we're doing evil live that was recorded in 1981 both of those sessions for like the album but then the full actual album of that didn't come out till 87 uh, like the ep version came out like 82 or something but so we're basically doing an order so the experience we're trying to go through the band and see them evolve actually whereas if we did it the way they were released it'd be like we see two full albums a live album that was recorded year before the first album of came out and then you know it's just it would be a mess so 
I'm doing it literally chronologically as best I could and with and excluding EPs because a lot of the EP songs are included on the album some aren't some are um, but I thought that this would be the best way to present it I really racked my head over how to do it but hopefully this makes sense to you and let's get into it let's talk about static age static age static age the first album recorded in January through February 1978, CI Studios, New York City. Released 1996. What's up with that, Cameron? Whoa, What's weird. up with that? What, what, what happened man? with that? Yeah. Yeah. I guess it was, like we were saying, it was shelved for a, a good deal of time. Yeah. Uh, they just couldn't find a record label to release it at the time. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's, it's a really weird thing. So they had a deal. Danzig had this thing, trademark for Blank Records. And, That's what it was, yeah. Yeah, and Mercury Records had been releasing stuff under Blank Records. Mm-hmm. And he's like, hey, hold on, I own that. And so in a deal, he traded 30 hours of studio time for Mercury to get the name Blank Records. And mm-hmm. so... That's what they recorded on was the 30 hours. Right, yeah. They were they were like working gra- graveyard shifts and apparently like most of the studio time was actually taken uh like setting levels and stuff like that mm-hmm. for it. So uh they basically only got like one or two passes of each song for the album just cuz so much of the time was setting up mics, setting up levels, making sure everything was like sounding good. And yeah. I think the album does sound really good, so it's I think out- it's worth it. Yeah, it's weird because I think if you're really used to the way the Misfits sound like if you're talking like the most popular songs, you're probably talking like Astro Zombies and, and super fast yeah, songs. Just yeah. Like, just go. You know, it's like that's not this album. In fact, this no. album is com- compared to the rest of the stuff is a lot it's pretty slower. Mellow, yeah. yeah. It, it was very sluggish when I was listening to it. Oh, Theme for a Jackal is another mm-hmm. one that's just kind of like this kind of weird sluggish tone to it that's kind of unlike the Misfits, but still kind of has those same qualities to it as well. Yeah. And also this is the album, the only album that we're talking about here that doesn't have Doyle on guitar. Yeah, it has um oh gosh, what's his name? His name's well he goes by I think I want to say this right. It's Francia Coma. That's what it was. F R A N C H E with little little accent. Yeah. Coma. So I'm gonna call him Coma. Coma. That's uh, the only one that we have him on guitar here. And that to me oh by the way, just when this album was shelved, they did take some of the songs and did the uh, Bullet single instead, um, released on Plan 9 Records, yeah. Plan 9 from Outer Space. There we go. By the way, in case you didn't know, Misfits have a lot of references to old horror movies. Oh, geez. Surprise, surprise. Uh, um, it's like every one of their songs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, often directly just saying the plot of a movie. Or... Yeah, exactly. I know, like, uh, not on this album, but the song Helena is about oh, yeah. the movie Boxing Helena, which if you haven't seen that movie... It's awesome. <laughs> Great movie. Uh, yeah. Well, in this one, we have Return of the Fly. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Return of uh, the Fly with Vincent Price. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> with that's, Vincent that's, Price. That's the lyrics. Return of the Fly yeah, with, with Vincent, Vincent Price. Price. <laughs> I mean, that's literally the lyric. <laughs> but yeah, when we're talking about this, the the musical aspects of this album. Uh, you feel like you feel the influence of like those 50s and 60s bands way more and like the influence of like Elvis and stuff. Yeah. I think a lot that helps with that is um, they throw a lot of piano in the background. I've noticed on, yeah. like, a, a handful of songs where it's like this very cool, almost boogie woogie piano going on in the background, oh, which yeah. kind of added to that, uh, that 50s vibe. Yeah. Especially theme for Jack. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was referencing. Yeah. 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 And like, and that song's really interesting too. Cause you have these things that you don't really see for a lot of their songs later. You have the piano, you have like this bass break and like the feedback. Heavy, heavy and, tremolo too. Yeah. The effects yeah. on the stuff, the guitar for a punk album, what you imagine, a mi- well, most people would imagine a misfits album. The guitar is actually not that distorted. No. Like it's yeah. not that this album isn't necessarily that heavy. Like as far as an aggressive, it's, they're good songs. Don't get they're me wrong. They're great. And it's hard to describe. I'm not trying to like say, oh, these ones are better because they're way more aggressive or something like that. But when you think of like the classic Misfits sound, it, you don't really hear it in terms of like mixing and guitars and stuff. I feel like you hear it way more with Danzig and the bass. The bass is, is a huge one. Yeah. I think that really defines the Misfits. Yeah. Is, is Jerry Only's bass tone. I yeah. Mean, and as far as I know, too, also this is the only album that we have Mr. Jim on drums. Oh yeah. So and by the way, he uses the ride cymbal a lot yeah. and a much more like kind of groovy, more jazzy type of drum sound. Um, yeah, you don't hear too much of that in like later albums. It's it's all crash. It, it is is nothing but crash. Yeah, it's hi hat crash. Yeah, that's it's it. Like, <laughs> like you know, just that and that's and that punk beat. You know, that, that's influenced everybody. Exactly. But of course, you have still have on this album. Like of course, last caress. Amazing. It's catchy as hell. Yep. 
horrific lyrics. Oh, oh, they're the best. Are you kidding? The best. <laughs> I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean that they're just you're like no, they're 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 purposely offensive. Yeah, he's just like it's as if Danzig was like, I don't have any lyrics for this song. I'm just gonna say the most offensive thing that came to mind, and that's yeah. what it was. <laughs> exactly, and like I said, covered by I think every band. Including our band, we've played that song before. Oh, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, that and hybrid moments exa- are like, the, say, <laughs> like the two that we play. Hybrid moments, amazing version of it. Yeah, totally awesome. Uh, just it's so weird because like the um the version that most people I think in the eighties especially knew where um there's a there was a cassette release. I actually have it in here somewhere. Um, the legacy of brutality. Yes, legacy of brutality. So this cassette, you can hear it. There it is. Um, it's a it's a black cassette too. So this is a Plan Nine release for it. So a lot of these songs, a lot of these really classic songs, especially hybrid moments that people love, when the Misfits broke up, some of the songs from Static Age were put onto different compilations. One of them that was very, very popular was Legacy of Brutality, where he went back and overdubbed all the instruments for things that weren't him, so he wouldn't have to pay royalties to the band members. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> and so that version of hybrid moments that's on this version, maybe for a while before, you know, the new... the original version to now put on every stream platform and everything that we're familiar with that version sounds way different at least to me it sounds this sounds way more like the walk among us version of right, yeah. cuz it's just more straightforward big reverby drums like much more just basic bass yeah and um so it's really weird cuz I'm used to almost the le- the legacy version and then that's funny because I'm so used to the Static Age version of it. So when I hear the Legacy of Brutality version, I'm just kind of like, "What is? Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, bass is way better on this on the Static Age version. I agree. Like, yeah, awesome. Totally makes that song. Well, it just adds a lot of warmth to it and a lot of depth to it. I feel it's like yeah. you. Uh, it's not like you're hearing the bass; you're feeling it. And I think if a bass player can accomplish that, where you you almost don't recognize, you know, the bass is there, but you feel it more than you can hear it. Um, I think that's a, a real testament to musicianship. Yeah. Especially on Jerry Only's part. For yeah. Static Age. What, again, when was this recorded? This was 70... 78. 78. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, and that's and that's what's crazy about it because it's also like Jerry Only, like when he, when the, he has asked to join the band, apparently they saw like, I think it was Mr. Jim, whoever the original drummer was, he just saw that he had a bass in the back of his car. I was like, you play bass? You want to be in a band? Oh, is that what it was? Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah. And so he's like, oh, he's like, you know, I've only been playing, like, he'd only been playing bass for a few months when he joined the Misfits. And he's like, good enough. Yeah, he's a great bassist. Um, he's awesome. And like, there's a lot of really cool playing on Static Age where it's just, you know, kind of climbing or doing cool bass riffs and everything for somebody who technically hadn't even playing that long. Yeah. Also, I feel like maybe it's just from what i've seen but it seems like jerry only was like the first adopter of the uh the stage makeup like i have a, a devil lock for sure the devil lock for sure but also just like the the hard black under eye mm-hmm. like i know on i have like a re-release of static age on vinyl and there's a cover sheet on the inside of of a band photo and like everyone else looks normal but jerry only sticks out so much because he's just got these like super dark under eyes yeah um yeah also if you ever want to see any cool photos of the early misfits eerie von's book is awesome i reviewed that yeah super cool I'll have to um, check out those photos. But yeah, the um, some of the lyrics and stuff on this are, are pretty interesting. Like um, for, for Static Age and TV Casualty, you get kind of like the, I think the whole idea about TV Casualty is like being addicted to TV, even though it sucks or something like that. Mm-hmm. But Danzig like has talked about how he just loved TV. The idea of like, oh, like, you know, when he was growing up and stuff and, and like some about like people being lost to it. I was very interesting. I was trying to look yeah. into some of the lyrics, the meanings of some of the lyrics for these songs because with a lot of Misfit songs, I feel like a lot of songs have a ton of meaning because he tries to cram so many lyrics into such a short right. amount of thing that you can try, you can cover a whole bunch of subjects. That's like, you know, hey, let's make a song about Re- Return of the Fly, you know? Yeah. It's like... Well, what's it about? Well, it's Return of the Fly with Vincent Price. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two and a half minutes? Okay. Cool. Okay, there right, go. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, uh, But it's weird. We have some things like We Are 138. Yeah. By the way, great song. It's super catchy because it's so simple. Just We Are oh, 138. 138. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Great. That, that's one of the most popular, I think. That's at least that's one of the first ones that from comes one of the, yeah. That's like just seemed to last. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then people argue all the time about what that song is about, and Danzig has said, "quote It's about violence." That's it. Go on. That's it. Are you? <laughs> um, and there it's was, about violence. Yeah. And there was a whole thing where um, 
Jerry, I wonder if only 138 is like a police code or something. Maybe it's police code for murder or no, something I, like that. I don't know. People think it's about THX 1138, the movie that's oh. about like conforming and stuff. But then, and Jerry only had his own idea of what it was about. And then, and then Danzig's like, they don't know anything about it. They didn't write it. <laughs> like, okay, weird. So he still hasn't told anybody what it's about as far as cool. I know. Okay, right, one thing I do want to say about this. So I know that they were very limited and they also were, it was back when you couldn't really fix many things. Mm hmm. Is that you can tell like a, they're playing kind of out of sync a little like a number of times. Yeah, well, I think it was it was all recorded live. Uh, I think there was slight overdubbing from what I read. It was like they did an occasional overdub, but most of it was just like okay, let's play the songs, go. Um, so again, yeah, being a scrappy punk band, like they just probably didn't care or were just in a rush, and they were like, well, yeah, this is the best one we got. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like literally from the first song, you could tell like Static Age. I'm like, yeah, they could tell like he's dragging here, he's dragging here. He's like. I'm like, but uh, you know, it works. But it kind of adds to the effect. That's it's uh, it gives an uncanny feel to it because it's just so imperfect. And it feels like so much more, you know, homemade in that way. Yeah. I mean, nothing about the. I'll say everything about these albums that we're talking about today. None of them feel like, oh, he was doing it for a corporate entity to do. Is like you could tell they were like Danzig's like I'm gonna push this music as far as we can, and yeah. we're making it because we need we to like, make music. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I think that was what was so appealing to me, like getting into the Misfits when I first got into like hard rock and stuff like that. I like heard their quality and I was like, man, I can make this in my bedroom. Like, and that's really all they cared about. They just like wanted their music out there. And I think that was very appealing for me. Yeah. By the way, we also have, I know that they're known for their short songs, but Come Back is five minutes long. That's the longest song. Is it really? Is, yeah. It's. I think that's the longest Misfits song ever. It's the longest song on this record for sure. It also has like super coursey like effect vocals. Um, it's probably the one that just sounds the strangest to me. But yeah, you know, this is where you really see like kind of the early like the 50s, 60s stuff because you hear the surf influence. Yep, exactly. Yeah, yeah. With that, yeah, like you were saying, that chorus and also a tremolo in there as well, especially in the ending when it fades out. It's mm -hmm. got this really cool wash at the end that I, I absolutely love. Yeah, it sounds like everything's melting. Absolutely. You have teenagers from Mars. Would not be the last song about teenagers or uh, any Mars. kind of interplanetary <laughs> yeah, type thing. Aliens, yeah. yeah. Awesome bass. So awesome. Yeah. And this is one of those things where I really see like how the drum styles are so different from later albums, where it's just all ride. Or, yeah. yeah. It's like just so, just ride symbols the song. <laughs> like, yeah. And that bass tone is just so, uh, I, the best way I can describe it is like guttural. It, yeah, it's so good. It's uh, it's chunky. It's guttural. It's uh, grimy. I guess you could call it. I don't know. It sounds like a bass running through like a guitar amp with like some kind of distortion pedal. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. I, I, that's probably what it was. Yeah, <laughs> and it sounds it, like very thin sounding bass. Mm -hmm. not, not necessarily in a bad way, but a lot of the actual bass frequencies on right. this album come from the drums. Yeah, exactly. And um, I would be totally jipping the audience out if i did not talk about how awesome danzig's performance is probably the most consistent thing on this album is just his vocals yeah it's great there man it's crazy to think of where he went just a few years later mother and all this stuff yeah. and like the super bluesiness to his voice but like he just has a even though he has a like a baritone voice it's so cutting and so yeah just i don't know Compared to what I just it so cuts, useful, it cuts useful. through the mix hard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But he just is not afraid to belt it out. And in the times when they have can do the overdub parts, it's like just locks up real well. Yeah. So impressed by it, even how early it was, you know, because that just shows at the time. You know, people criticize him now because they say he's always out of breath and he's basically holding on to a beer keg in his gut. Um, <laughs> but. <laughs> That's awesome. I don't mean that in a bad way, but no, it's, people um, are hard on Danzig. Like, yeah, well, yeah, I, I understand. And he's he, well, he, he used to be hard on his fans. Well, he, yeah, I know. <laughs> that's that's the whole reason. Yeah. Is he's not. He's he's the nicest fellow. <laughs> he's easy to poke fun at because he doesn't take it very well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, it's fun to push his buttons. The whole thing about like when I think when they reunited, it was like you can't use cell phones to record us or whatever, and like you know like super punk man like you need to like put the phone in like a bag or something it was just just crazy wow. it's like it's yeah that stuff anarchy nuts. yeah exactly so i get why people love making fun of him yeah. um but yeah it just shows that like he actually is a really good performer no um, yeah he's a, he's a strong performer well, yeah because you can even say oh you know like a lot of bands back then even by coming into the 80s and late, late 70s like studio albums were a big thing you know where you could go in and 
like overdub a million things and do all this stuff. It's like they had 30 hours and they recorded a ton of stuff and did it really well. Yeah. And um, a lot of that I had say has to is like really pushed to the next level by Danzig's voice on this where I feel like if it was somebody else, like these same exact arrangements and stuff, like there's some good stuff, but then like his voice is really what well, makes and the I songs think that's catchy. Like, I know there's like a big, I don't know, not, not a huge argument, but there's an argument in the community that's like, I don't know, Danzig kind of, in a way, is the Misfits. He is the sound of the Misfits, so I don't know. At least that's how I take it. I, Of course, I'm, I'm a bigger fan of their earlier stuff than I am their later stuff, um, but I, I feel like Danzig really pieces together the sound of the Misfits. I think he does. I think... I think that it's so necessary for them to get baritone singers because of that. Yeah. Like even when they have Graves, he has such a deep voice or such a unique voice that's almost like a more alternative rock version of Danzig's voice. It's like an Elvis version of Danzig. Yeah, and it's just like, that. I think that combined with that, the type of instrumentation that they do is so, I mean, you can't change it or else it wouldn't sound like the Misfits. I mean, that's one of the reasons why, uh, we'll get to that with some other stuff. But anyway, (laughs) yes, in in some ways I agree with that. (laughs) That's nice. I mean, it's not good, but uh, we'll talk about that if we ever get to the Graves Misfits. Um, but yeah, Static Age, it's great. In case you're wondering, it was f- for the actually officially released for the first time, in, I think 1996. And so there was all this stuff going on that led to basically them coming to a contractual agreement to where they could re-release some of this stuff. And uh, there was a whole bunch of stuff. We'll talk more about that. But the whole thing was that probably did get released in the 90s, and that's the version you probably see on Spotify mm-hmm. and all these things is considered the actually official release of it. Um, and uh, you can buy it on vinyl nowadays, probably at Urban Outfitters. Uh, yep. <laughs> I, I got mine at some some record store. So yeah. you can you can find them everywhere. Find them. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so even though it's technically the first album, recorded in 1978, 1996 is when you would have got it. But it, it's cool that we get to hear now. So Static totally. Age, I recommend it. Just go, in the, go into it with the idea that it's not, necessarily the cliche that you think of with the misfits out yeah so yeah cool welcome to random interesting goth stuff aka rigs beautiful okay all right so <laughs> we got some uh some stories for you today one of the things i was following during this last month of well i guess it's not it's it's literally New Year right now. It's the first 2021 thing I've, I've created right now. It's January 1st, yeah. January 1st. <laughs> um, so one of the things I was following recently was Robert Smith did these awesome charity streams where he was playing older Cure songs. So he did a, some songs from 17 Seconds, and he did another live stream where he played some songs off of Faith. Awesome. If you know me, you know In Your House. It's one of my favorite songs of all time by The Cure. Great version of it. So that was awesome. Awesome. So if you want to actually see Robert Smith play a whole bunch of older songs, and by the way, the video is kind of funny because it's just Robert Smith at this desk. I don't even think what, he's just more, sitting at a desk. Yeah, he's not wearing shoes or anything. Okay, it's just like barefoot. Is it just like a still camera? Yeah, it's like really? doesn't, doesn't move. It just oh my god. It's, it's literally <laughs> just like it literally is like Robert Smith on a Zoom call playing okay. playing these super classic songs. Weird. Yeah, it was just a this great. Uh, it was to raise uh, money for. Poverty Alleviation Charities Letters to Santa Initiative, which fulfills wish lists of families in need with food, clothes, and technology and all that oh, stuff. Oh, that's quite nice. Um, so that was cool because he did it twice, and I'm sure that was probably pretty helpful to that because it's freaking Robert Smith. Yeah, speaking of another Smith, Patty Smith just turned 74 I think uh, on, uh, what, December 30th? They're related, yeah. obviously. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. No, but Patty Smith, you know. 70? Got- 74 Damn. godmother of punk um and a just mm. poet uh artist uh 74 now nice that's great yeah, <laughs> see, that's, that's pretty good man yeah. I mean, everybody expects uh everything and everybody who's related to music to just die instantly oh yeah especially on the front lines of like alternative music like yeah. half of those people are gone <laughs> yeah the other half are on their way yeah right and a lot of, some sometimes they make it yeah so, that's awesome we also have fields of the nephilim Awesome. This story is a little bit older, but I, that's why I call it random interesting guy stuff instead of recent interesting guy stuff, <laughs> which it used to be called until I just decided to cover whatever the heck I want. There we go. <laughs> um, but uh, one of the things I thought was cool is Elysium is being re-released. Well, I mean, it technically is re-released. It has been re-released. It's the 30th anniversary of Elysium. Super awesome album. 
You can listen to that at the Fields of Nephilim episode from a hundred thousand years ago. It's like if you don't if you're unfamiliar with Fields of Nephilim, it's essentially like what if a cyberpunk Western movie met goth music? It's super cool. Super awesome. It was re-released on colored vinyl. Look at that right there. Look at that. It's oh, beautiful. Cool. It's green. Hey, awesome. I like that. Matches your hair. Yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> um Super great record. Thought I would just throw it out there. Beggar's Archive has been doing, I think, a few of these different kinds of release of albums. Hmm. Just, I recommend them. Because especially, like, a few years from now, like, that stuff always ends up being usually sold out and super hard to find later. Kind of becomes collectible. Yeah, so I thought I'd mention it while it's still available here. As of recording. As of recording. Yeah. (laughs) As as of recording, it is still available. As of recording. So don't come to me 100 years later and go, that's actually $500. And you can only, I'm like, Yes. (laughs) I know, right As now. January 1st, yeah. 2021. Yes. It's still available. <laughs> yes. It's, gosh, I, you don't even know how much that happens. Really? Uh, oh, my gosh. <laughs> I've, like, uh, there's been a few. Uh, the other piece of news we have is, um, okay, so there was a stage production for David Bowie's Lazarus from 2016. So, apparently, this is going to be available to stream January 8th through 10th. Oh, okay. Okay. And it's a original 2016 London stage production, and you can stream it via Dice. Like, I don't know what Does that is. Does it cost is. anything, or is it a free stream? Or? I don't know. I just thought yeah. I would th- just, uh, throw that out here. i put that on my calendar. Yeah. yeah check that out. Um, it's great, but that's uh, to commemorate his birthday, because David Bowie's birthday was January. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Um, so he did collaborate on this, but it, uh, you know, this was obviously the year that he passed away. Yeah. It focuses on Thomas Newton as he remains still on earth, a man unable to die, his head soaked in cheap gin and haunted by a past love. We follow Newton over the course of a few days where the arrival of another lost soul might finally set him free. Wow. Yeah, right? So You I, sold me. Yeah, right? <laughs> it obviously had some of the songs in there and a whole bunch of different stuff. I thought I'd mention this just because people always like David Bowie stuff. And yeah, we heard a snippet of some of the stage production, the, uh, yeah. the actor... Uh, had a pretty good voice. It was. It was yeah. pretty good. Yeah, yeah it was not bad. pretty good fit. Also, I, I just thought I would mention like there's this whole weird thing with like Broadway and plays getting to be able to be on like streaming services and stuff. So yeah, it's like this whole. It's, thing. it's cool. Uh, I don't know. Part of me feels it takes away from Broadway because you know, kind of point is see a live performance. You kind of want to be there live, but of course, under the circumstances, we can't really do that. So it is cool that we're getting some form of live stream. I know. There's been so many stories of like all these production places where they're just like yeah man broadway and all this stuff and they're just like out of work for like a whole year now oh yeah i mean just nothing any live performer i mean especially if uh you know that's your main source of income like you get screwed man yeah you don't, <laughs> you don't really have an off season no i mean that's really it. you're paid per performance you know yeah. and you may be on retainer to be to have certain jobs but like it's not that's a rarity for a lot of those people to even have a steal a paycheck outside of a right. one production you know yeah. Especially like people who rig lights and tie, you know, it's just any sort of yeah, any gaffer, or any audio engineers who work no. live stuff, they're out. All the stuff that makes it so you can actually view it. Exactly. Um, thought that would be interesting. So, uh, some random interesting guest stuff. Rigs. Rigs. There it is. There it is. Cameron, you know that was just too produced for me i didn't i was just yeah i just uh, was like oh i wish i had more of like a live raw experience of the band this time you know i don't think i'm ever gonna be able to find that well donnie i think you're in luck because what? there's eva live oh, by the misfits oh my goodness the live album my i know god okay well <laughs> <laughs> all right so what we have here uh i did want to say there were some things that happened before this was recorded and in between so static age got shelved right so there's some notable things that happened in Force. There was the some single they did before it, but Horror Business, 1979. This it was a single that was released. This is the first time we see the their logo. It's taken from the short or the it's not, it's the serials. Serials are like these, like 15 minutes, tiny short films. Yeah. So it's hard to describe what a serial yeah. is if you don't know what it's it is. It's a serial. <laughs> um, but it's from the 40s, 1946. It's taken from the Crimson Ghost, and they say it was inspired by it. It's literally it. It's the Crimson Ghost. It is literally. It's the Crimson Ghost. Yeah. Uh, I do want to say that this there's a really crazy thing that the Misfits were involved in when Nancy Spungen, Sid Vicious's, that whole thing, you know, like where Sid Vicious was tried for 
murder and all this stuff. And he was on bail yeah. um, for the murder of Nancy Spungen, of course, because he owned the knife and all this stuff. Um, so Vish was arrested and charged with second degree murder. Uh, he was released on bail. And while he was awaiting trial, uh, on February 1st, 1979, a whole bunch of his friends, that included Jerry only, gathered to celebrate him having made bail an apartment. But at dinner, when they were all celebrating, like, hey, you got to do whatever. Of course, that was when he got the heroin that eventually led to him dying that night. Yeah. I, uh, I heard uh, that Sid's mother actually visited the studio with Danzig at one point like yeah he walked in with some blue-haired lady in a punker outfit and they were like who's this and it's like oh it's sid's mom yeah <laughs> there was like a whole thing where they came back like, yeah all this stuff so it's that's kind of crazy that they're so involved with that like, I'm like wow. i know because you think like you know they're from new jersey <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but they just happened to be there during that time um also in 1979 um the misfits performed as openers for the damned in new york they had spoken with Dave Vaney about saying, oh, you know, maybe we could open up for you or whatever. And they took it very seriously. Mm-hmm. The Misfits did. Yes. The Damned did not. Vaney did not. <laughs> uh, and so uh, when they excellent. arrived, Vaney was like, whoa, you guys are here. You guys are it's, serious? It's like, oh, oh, okay. Yeah. So they got him on the tour. And then the band was like, the Misfits were like, well, this sucks because we're not getting paid. I think, I don't know if anything or really much at all. And then they felt like the equipment, the backline they were giving them just sucked. And they hated it all because it's not like they flew all their equipment out because it didn't make sense to do, especially then. Right. So what a cool tour to see, though. The Damned and the Misfits. Oh man, oh, man that would have been so. That cool. would have been amazing, <laughs> amazing. So eventually, the band got into like a fight. Danzig was arrested. Surprise, surprise. Uh, and then it inspired London Dungeon, the song. There we go. Yeah, it's this whole thing. It basically just did not go well. <laughs> and so. I think that wraps up the Misfits. <laughs> yeah, it didn't go well. <laughs> didn't go well. Um, so I thought I would mention that in between when we were talking about Eva Live because I thought that was this crazy piece of trivia to be able to say like this happened. Yeah. So it was 1981 where Eva Live was recorded. And so we have it split into two. So this album was initially released in 1982. It was like an EP version. It was just yeah. a few songs. And then a full album version that spliced together songs from two performances was released in 87. So like I said, we're jumping ahead a little bit, but technically this was recorded in 1981. Right. So that's when the songs were tracked. So Black Flag was also performing there. No way, or really? Perform- I didn't know that. Yeah, right. Wow. They're, they're performing, well, that near there, not oh, okay. in the same place. I was going to say, yeah. I was like, same show? Wow, not even better. <laughs> um, they're performing that night at Mahube Garden. Man, what's up with the weird names? This? I don't know, man. Um, downstairs on Broadway and Harry Rollins is like, hey, I love the Misfits. And so he went up there and he sings guest vocals on We Are 138. You know, you can hear at the beginning of the song, he goes, uh, Henry Rollins, you know, like here, yeah. like is up on the stage, you know, and it's, uh, that's pretty cool. I'll say the thing about this, Evil Live, it is a live recording. It's very rough. Oh, it uh, is super rough, yeah. man. It's bad. It, like frame of reference, it's as if it, you recorded... Uh, the album on your cell phone like 15 years ago. It's pretty, like, it's, 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 it's bad. rough, it's rough. <laughs> um, and also like, it seems like some songs are just worse quality than others. Yeah, agree. There, there's certain songs where certain instruments are just like, I don't know if it's the frequency just hit the mic in a better way, but it just like, I know, especially um, Hate Breeders, the guitar mm-hmm. tone, I really liked in that one specifically, uh-huh. but in other songs, it's almost like I couldn't even hear the guitar yeah. at all. Or but, like, it just seems like the drums get so distorted. Or, yep. It's crazy to me, but- uh, It's still reason, a live album. <laughs> yeah, it's a live album, and one of the reasons I wanted to cover it too is because it's. Like, I think it's a cool, interesting look into where what the band was doing live into where it went with Walk Among Us. Because you see, like, it does not necessarily even sound like the band from Static Age, because it's not really. Yeah. I mean, it's like new, you know, do you finally have Doyle on guitar? Arthur Googie on drums for this Arthur one. Arthur Googie. Googie. <laughs> <laughs> if you want a no holds barred, aggressive live album by a punk band from like this time, I mean, this is it. I mean, yeah. it's very poorly mixed. It's super, just, just how we like it. <laughs> yeah. It's super distorted. <laughs> Almost, I mean, seriously, almost to the point of where you're just like, sometimes it sounds like the band's like, are they even playing the same song? Just no, <laughs> there's like no. No cohesion at yeah, all. It's like, how would you even learn the songs? It's just all energy. Yeah. And um, just downstroke power chord. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's cool for that. Yeah. It's like, it's awesome for that because it is so. Raw. Yeah. Just, <laughs> just very rough. Yeah. Um, also, I want to say that the title is a palindrome. 
So yeah. it can be, it's the same word backwards as forwards. Yeah. Which evil I, live. That's awesome. Uh, evil live. Evil live. Evil live. Yeah. So, and also you have this thing. So you've kind of have, finally have like the first of the, whoa. Yeah. The whoa. whoa <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Um, but you have Night of the Living Dead. And um, it's very funny because they're just way off. Like him and Jerry only, like Danzig and Jerry only's voices, they're just like, you hear him go, whoa, whoa. and it's like a, ha- a half second later, then all the, the other yep. guy comes in. Um, I think there was one section, it, it might have been on, it might have been on Hate Breeders, I can't remember where it was, but there was like a third vocal in there, and it just like washed past the mic, it was just like, whoa. There's <laughs> <laughs> like a, there's a lot of really funny things like that, you can hear like people getting up on the stage or like bumping into them. Oh, yeah. or, uh, I mean, if you've seen any live performance of the Misfits or like, I guess any punk band during that time, the audience was on stage most of the time. It's just like, chaos. That's just, yeah, it's how it is. It's just complete, <laughs> complete and utter chaos. And like, it's so funny how, because people are like, that was so awesome back then. And they talk about it and they're like, it sucked. Yeah. Because it's like, <laughs> you're playing CBGBs and Doyle's like, oh man, you gotta like throw away your shoes after you go there. It's so gross. And yeah. like, and Danzig talking about like, I think... I think they're talking about like, oh, they just spit. Like, I just, I just want people to stop <laughs> spitting on me. Like, is so bad. He's like, he's That's like, I just awesome. hated how people spit on us. And like, yeah, but I mean, it's that you can feel it in this. That's um, so funny. Also, Astro Zombies. Uh, other than a really super incredibly fast performance of this song, yeah. to where it's almost unrecognizable. <laughs> All the songs are almost unrecognizable yeah. as the songs that they are. Which yep. is that. I mean, that's the charm of it, but it's also like. I'd kind of like, like to listen to the Misfits, please. Yeah, it's also like, <laughs> is it? Did you guys not practice enough, or was this intense, or did you practice so much that you could play them so quickly that right. you know? So yeah, so you get to kind of hear a version of Astro Zombie, sort of. So, yeah. <laughs> but the woes are all over the place. Like I said, the quality of this album, it seems like some of the songs are mixed better than others, or just way more rough. Um, the second half, when you get to Devil's Whorehouse, and after that, mm-hmm. it just seems like it's way better tape or something that they recorded with when it switches into the other date. That's really what I think of the quality, you know, like the actual quality of the album. But the you're not listening to this album because you want flack quality, super crisp mixing. You're listening because yeah, you no, want to hear you want to hear an insane punk show. Exactly. Yeah. And like uh, like Static Age, I feel like, I know it was mixed poorly, but what you can hear of the bass also like really, I feel like, dominates the album a lot like jerry on these bass tones especially in certain songs are just like just so perfect fuzzy and gritty and i love them so yeah it was good yeah it was really good and um yeah i mean i I recommend it but it's that's pretty much all there is to it (laughs) yeah it's uh it's not one that you really want to i don't know like throw on at a get together at least in my mind it's it's, like it's too noisy yeah i mean it's just like (laughs) it and not in a not in a good way. Cause you know what the song's supposed to sound like. Yeah, it's um, great if you want to. I don't know, like time travel in a way. If you want to like see what the Misfits like really were like on stage raw, uh, it's like a great way to to see that or hear that. Some of the banter is really funny too. At the beginning of Astro Zombies, because there's not really a reaction from the crowd in the first few songs. Then we get to Astro Zombies, they start cheering, and go woo, yeah, yeah, and Denzel goes, "That's more like it." <laughs> 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 Also, at the end, uh, I think it's during London Dungeon. At some point during the show, he gets into like a fight with somebody during the show, like in the middle of the song. He's like, I'm going to knock you out or something like that. <laughs> and at the end of London Dungeon, he says, F you to some guy. <laughs> Good. Also, at Nike Agogo, you can hear them tuning their instruments. Yeah. Very. Okay. We're going to tune up. He's like, it, you can hear Danzig getting impatient yeah (laughs) and you're like then you start hearing doyle start to tune too (laughs) yep it's really funny i love that but yeah of course then of course when henry rollins comes on stage for one we are 138 it's like it's like him rollins and it's just like okay i guess a song with henry (laughs) 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 yeah great it's just it's great for what it is if you're looking for that type of thing exactly so yeah Oh my goodness. We're getting to the first Misfits album. I know. <laughs> after reviewing two other yeah. releases. This is like when you think of the Misfits, this is the album, at least for me, that like comes straight to mind. It's Walk Among Us. Yeah, and this was technically 
the first album released by them. So yeah, there was a whole, like I said, all the EPs, all the stuff, all that existed, even though they were formed in 77. It's like the first studio album. Yeah. Yeah. Five years into the, into their run. It's they a finally did it. Technically, they did the, it. technically the first album <laughs> um, with walk among us. Uh, so basically, like, yeah, it's essentially like two albums shelved, and this was the one which exactly, you're like, yeah. this is going to be it. And of <laughs> course, a lot of the songs from uh, Evil Live are are on this. It's kind of like, I guess they were working on. I'm assuming they were working on this album while Evil Live was going on. Oh yeah, and it's, it's, yeah, basically the Misfits have a history of just like having old songs that slowly made their way into stuff. Yeah, yeah, Walk Among Us is no exception to that. And, uh, but it's like how most bands, it's the fact that the Misfits have just really good documentation. Whenever they could record, they would. Yeah. Anyways, the first released by the band, 1982. It's probably what you think of when you think of the Misfits sound. A lot of people. It's got the whoa o's. It's very, very punk. This is yeah. like this is just like a straight punk album. Is one yeah. Among Us. Just great. Just great. Awesome energy. So here's some trivia about it. Of course, te- I mean, technically the third thing they recorded because it was static age and then 12 hits from hell which ne- again never got released mm-hmm. still to this day that's never been released Is it? O- officially Dang. Um, only bootlegs do you have one i had it before i i hope i still have it somewhere i had you gotta find i it. did i did actually you have, find it for me i want to hear i know that. it's a really cool versions of a lot of the songs especially like skulls that was one of my favorite versions of skulls oh really oh, um man. but like i said i did, I know I had it at some point. What uh, what form did you have it in? I had a disc, a burn like a disc that was like, like a, a bootleg. Oh wow, cool! Um, and I ripped that disc, and I had that for like a long time. And just somewhere uh, in your files, somewhere it exists. <sighs> but the the disc is somewhere in a big tote somewhere too. Um, anyway, a whole bunch of those songs actually made it on here too. So this was recorded at multiple studios, recorded uh, between June eighty one to January eighty two. You also know it's on this album, Mommy Can I Go and Kill Tonight is live. Live. And um, honestly, I think this is my favorite version of that song. Like, out of all the renditions they've done, oh, yeah. th- this version of it is just so solid. Um, big fan of that one. I also think, too, Night of Living Dead, of course, was a single. And I think that originally the single was released so that they could get money to go to fly, to go tour with the Dan. Oh, or something really? Like that. Oh, yeah. wow. I think that was the deal with that. But that single is on here. So, yeah, it's a compilation of all his stuff. I mean, that, that song dates way back. A lot of these were done at Mixolydian Studio. What's up with these names? M- Mixolydian or Mixolydian? Yeah, in Boonton, New Jersey. So, cool. Staying close to home. Yeah, exactly. Also, just even before we talk about the music, there's a hilarious amount of references and stuff in this album to many things. Night of the Living Dead. <laughs> yeah, of course. Astro Zombies yep. from the 68 film, The Astro Zombies. Walk Among Us, of course, is The Creature Walks Among Us, the um, f- was it the fourth uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon movie. Hmm. Crazy, crazy movie. The cover features flying saucers from Earth versus the Flying Saucers and the Rat Bat Spider from The Angry Red Plane. By the way, that's no joke. That is literally the, the exact thing from the poster on the cover. I mean, they could say it's inspired. Yeah, just like the Crimson Ghost. Yeah. All right. (laughs) It's like exactly the same. Also, many people know that this cover, I mean, probably in popular culture today, we know the cover as being purple and green. Yeah. Initially, when it was printed, it had like a pinkish tone. Yeah. 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 yeah, It was pink pink and and like white. Yeah. That was actually a printing error. And Danzig, even at the time, even the 80s, came out pretty vocally against saying like, they screwed it up. Like, yeah. they wanted to use a cheaper process to print it, and they didn't send us proofs of what it was going to look like. We had the artwork, and it was a certain way, and then when they printed it, they just totally screwed it up. And he said, like, the idea was supposed to, it was supposed to be, like, pink, and then part of it was supposed to be blue, and they're supposed to come together into purple. Right. Yeah. And um, over the years, they have varied the colors, like, where the font is green, or the background's green, or the purple, you know, it's like. Yeah, I honestly, I, I love the pink version of it. I think it looks cool. I don't care if it was a printing error. I, I like it. I like the purple version because I like purple. Oh, that's fair. Yeah, um, yeah. But anyway, I just thought that was all very interesting stuff as far as this album is concerned. Also, they got a, dr- a new drum for this. And so actually, Jerry only very much thanks Arthur's dedication to the music and the rehearsals 
um, saying that this is really what made the album what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the drums in this one were like really prominent for me. Um, I, you know, unlike, I don't know, I feel like Static Age, a lot of it was bass guitar. And I think part of it might have just been like because they used too much ride or something like that. Mm-hmm. But I guess uh, me just coming from like a punk background, Walk Among Us, the drums really, really stand out for me. They're really in your face, really forward, and they just kind of drive everything. And I, I want to say like this is one of the most like, I guess, moshable songs uh, or like moshable albums I've uh, it, like in the Misfits discography. Well, I mean, just from the live album, you can hear that Googie is Arthur Googie again. Mm-hmm. He had a lot of energy. I mean, that's for sure. Um, but his uh, his drums just really work super well. Like he knows exactly where to hit all the accents for every single. thing. I was gonna thing. say that accents galore. Like even with goes like da na 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 ba da na na ba da. Yeah, it's like and he's like oh, like it just adds. Even though these are super super simple, like guitar riffs and bass riffs, it's the drums really make it along with the vocals. I mean, it just pushes it so much farther than we had on Static Age and really any of the earlier stuff that they had done, uh, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, that's just what separates us. And this, the sound of this album is way more what you think of. You think of way heavily distorted guitars. Yeah. You think of that driving bass line that follows it and then has some accents. The drums that just almost directly follow the guitar. Yeah. And just Danzig's just the whoa and it's like <laughs> the, the and dancing just woes. being that more driving like da, 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 you know it's just great yeah like when you it opens up 20 eyes it's immediately more aggressive and, yeah and just way better like mixed and everything i mean i know it it hits you like a freight train when you start that album yeah yeah <laughs> absolutely well just the like and also i turned into a martian beginning well i mean in in album sense the right. beginning of the woes yeah you know like i turned into Dude. a martian whoa <laughs> like that's that's great see we need to do that hey, on our next album. <laughs> but um, that but that and you even have like a guitar solo somewhat in this yeah um which is very it's rare a, it's kind of a ramones-esque guitar solo i think it's just like a single note oh well, yeah it's only like that, yeah. but it's something you it's know? something at least yeah but it just like you can just feel that they have played these songs a lot. Yeah, the um, there's uh, just a, a tiny snippet of, I believe it's London Dungeon at the end of the live version of uh, Mommy, Can I Go Out and Kill Tonight? Mm-hmm. And um, you can even hear that from Evil Live is just like so much tighter. Mm-hmm. Um, it just like their live performance is just a lot tighter. And I kind of wish they added that version of London Dungeon on here, to be honest, because it sounded like it was going to be awesome. And then it just like fades off. It just off. cuts out. I know. Yeah. I got really disappointed. I was like, no, keep it like, going. All right. Please. And then, okay. Oh, London it. Dungeon. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's great. But you also have like different things like on All Hell Breaks Loose, like the vocal effects and the reverb type stuff. Like I said, there was some of this on Static Age. It just stuck out. Yeah. Like more. And like they just got the production right on it this one. It was just tasteful. Yeah. I mean, a they, lot of the effects were tasteful on here. Also, along with the palm muted guitar and the way this song is laid out, this pretty much was like the offspring's entire career in this one song, All Hell Break All Hell Breaks Loose. Oh, you pretty know what? Much, I can hear that. Yeah. It just reminds me of like an offspring song yeah. so much. I'm just like, they must have just been like, Okay. That, that's gonna be our career. That's it right there. <laughs> and make a billion dollars off of that. Yeah. Um, I know you recently showed me the uh, the music video for Brain Eaters, yeah, which oh, is yeah. off this album, which if you haven't seen that, go watch it. Yeah. I just watched it a couple days ago. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I think for years that was like, people were like wondering, like, oh, there's like the rumor that it existed and then, you know, bootlegs and all that stuff. And yeah, you said it's the only music video with Danzig in it? I believe. From like that Misfits era? Yeah, apparently there was, I mean, there's still rumors that there's like a, a Night of Living Dead one out there oh, and stuff. Oh, that'd be cool. But I'd as love far, to see that. As far as I know, I've never seen it. Yeah, um, a lot of the music videos came out during the, the Graves era. But, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> and, well, even then, there wasn't even that many Graves videos, which sucks, no, too. Yeah, Dig Up Her Bones. but we, we'll Dig Up Her Bones, it. Scream, and... It might, might be it. I mean, it's like there's barely anything. I yeah. Mean, I mean, that's that's the thing that sucks about the Misfits is they're so visual, and they never embraced music videos like I, I thought they should yeah. have. Yeah, yeah. So to this day, yeah. N- never mind. Um, we'll get into that in a, maybe a part two. <laughs> anyway, Nike Go Go. Yeah. Um, just in case you're wondering, I mean, this was obviously on um, Evil Live, but so it's about the Nike missile anti-aircraft missile system. So it's like to prevent like warheads or whatever. Right. So it's. I thought that was funny, but that's in New Jersey. That was a program in New Jersey. Interesting. So it's like a local legend. So I thought that was an interesting 
subject to cover. Um, Hate Breeders, amazing song. Oh, just great, it. just absolutely awesome. Night Living Dead, obviously it was a single before. By the way, all these songs, think about punk songs and, and like Misfits and stuff. They kind of, you get the formula for an album. Yeah. Right? So like each album kind of has a formula. Static Age had a formula of like the kind of drum beats and stuff and the songs were so much shorter. This song, These songs are way shorter yeah. than a lot of things on Static Age. But yeah, you get, it's like super sturdy guitars that bass, like, and it's basically what they try to do in each song to mess with that formula just enough. Yeah. And it's a lot of times it's, it is about the vocal melodies and the subject matter. Right. So like, yeah, not, it's like, it's like 13 songs and it's like 24 minutes long, roughly yeah. like 20, 25. Super, <laughs> super, super short. short. Love it. You have Night Living Dead. It is both about the movies and people who are like obsessed with zombies, almost like posers. It's really weird. It's like a song Inter- that's yeah. like, Song that's like riffing on posers, but also about the movie. Yeah, it's really, it's really <laughs> strange. Still cool. I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, by the way, great drum sounds. The whole album, great drum sounds. Yeah, love exactly. it. Exactly, love that's it. What I was thinking. Absolutely awesome. Skulls. Skulls. Mmm. I want your skulls. Awesome. Classic. Uh, this is also where you see, and I think it's a prime example of Danzig's weird way of pronouncing things. Yeah. It's like. You wouldn't even guess most of the vocals or what he's saying. And like yeah. and this comes from somebody who people have no idea what I'm saying half the time. <laughs> so I think I have somewhat of a a, a right to to criticize this. Weird vocals, yeah. As um like because people never have any idea what I'm saying and it's really funny to see people guess. That's why I, I've released all the um the lyrics. The the lyrics to our album. But like that first thing it, people always think it's like I sit, I sit so high and salmon on my lamp. You know, it's like <laughs> it's a the corpse is all hanging, headless and a lamp. Like yeah. bodies with no surprise yeah. to the blood drain down like devil's yeah. rain. We'll bathe tonight. Like <laughs> I gotta say, my my I don't know why, but <laughs> just like my favorite section of uh, the song is like hack off the heads of little girls and pull them on my walls. Hack the heads. <laughs> little, little, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's really sharp on that hack. <laughs> yeah, it's just. That is a perfect example of like Danzig. Being Danzig? Being Danzig. But, <laughs> but one of the reasons I bring it up too is when um, there's a very funny clip of Metallica because they've done tons of stuff with Danzig over the years yeah. playing Misfit songs and um, they covered uh, Green Hell. There's a really hilarious clip of where James Hale was like trying to remember the lyrics or something like that. And he has people, it's like years ago, has like people listen to the CD like multiple times and they still can't even get it. They're like, mm. oh, we, we think this is it. Yeah. And so they're like, why don't you just ask Danzig? And it's like, I have. He tells me something different every time. <laughs> <laughs> like, That's so good. And most people didn't even know what he was saying for yeah. a long time until they, he did like a book where he released a whole bunch of lyrics. And then people finally knew what he was yeah. saying in a whole bunch of these classic songs. But a, a ton of them, even still on the internet today, a, a whole bunch of songs are incorrectly listed, which is a... Uh, Pretty hilarious. That's to me. great. Good, good job, Danzig. Yeah. Oh, by the way, this very one of the things I like about skulls too is that there's very obviously wrong notes that are played that are left in. Yeah. Because it's like two guitars, like one's overdubbed. Literally hits a note and just stops. Like it played the like, bang, and then yep. like then it waits and then plays it and the next note. Oh yeah, it's it's great. <laughs> so you can tell it wasn't intentional, but they're like ah, uh, it works. keep it in there. Yeah, sounds, sounds good. Cool. Yeah, as long as it's offensive to your ears, it's a okay. <laughs> exactly. And of course, like you have some weird drum effects and stuff, like a uh, Devil's Whorehouse. And uh, uh, by the way, I love that lyric: "When I sin, I sin real good." <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, they better make a T-shirt of that. But if they haven't already, I'm sure they've got some something. Oh, like that. you know, you know, it's probably every <laughs> single lyric ever made for Misfits has yeah. some kind of shirt at this point. <laughs> Astro Zombies. I mean, what can you say? What, about what it? else? Yeah. What, what can you Done. say about it? It's, <laughs> Astro it's, Zombies. It's super great. Great vocals. Obviously, the overdub vocals for Exterminate. Yeah. That's like really weird. If it sounds like I'm being, I, I don't know, I guess we're not being, this is one of those episodes where I guess I'm not being as critical as I am on a lot of stuff. I think because, one, I love dancing. So yeah. that really does. <laughs> I know, I'm such a mis- Misfits fanboy that I'm like, I don't want to criticize them too hard. <laughs> and I guess I guess we did criticize Static Age and stuff for, yeah. for being what it is. Yeah. The thing about like these albums is they're not bloated and yeah. and, th- and they're not boring and they're not... And I think for the most Loaded's part... Loaded's a good word for that, yeah. Yeah, and I think one of the things that I criticize a lot of albums for 
is if they have a concept and it just doesn't quite nail it, or I would say the worst thing is if an album's boring. These really just check all the boxes for me. It's like, it's to the point, they had a vision and they really did it themselves. You know, it's not bloated with all this other stuff. It's distorted, but it's very balanced at the same time. Like there's not, I don't know, there's not too much... It's a little muddy, but, you know, that's kind of the sound of it. But it's still pretty defined in it, yeah. in, for what it is. And plus the melodies. I'm always trying to oh, search yeah. for melodies. You're a melody and, person. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always trying to find, even for, like, but they're super aggressive, but they have all this melody in, like, a minute and a half. And I'm like, yeah. and in my head, I'm like, you can make, like, a five-minute song with that with that many different. No, but that's all Danzig wants to do. He's yeah. like, here's my idea. Here it is. Next. Let's go. Exactly. <laughs> and that's what's so crazy about it. And Astro Zombies is a great example of that. It's like both a punk rock song, a pop melody, like it's just, it's so many different types of things. It's just a great song. And it's been covered obviously a whole bunch yeah. of times. That just is a testament to where, and also I think a testament to a lot of, especially these songs, because this, this is what people think of when they think of like classic misfits is they think of Walk Among Us, this album in particular, is, you know, you can take these songs and rearrange them in all different kinds of styles and they're still really good. And at their core, they're good fundamental songs. Yeah. yeah. And when you have a lot of droning, repetitive, all this other kind of music, it's like it works in this one setting, right? right? It works like, it works because this guy had this one guitar pedal and I was uh, smoking a ton of weed and, <laughs> and like I was really zoned out and like it's just good. It sounded so good, it's man. So, it's so ambient and you know, all stuff. <laughs> Whoa, um, drippy. <laughs> yeah, exa Exactly. <laughs> And there's something to be said for that. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not disregarding the type I of music. I love trippy music. Yeah. I love weird music. I'm not disregarding your atonal, droning, <laughs> ambient, hip hop music. Your lo-fi stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um. It's, there's definitely a lot of really good music out there like that. For especially if you like that type of music. But I'm saying these songs are great because, in just a songwriting sense, just outside of, you know, the oh punk. And this is revolutionary, and, and like you know, this is like screw all this other music because this, <laughs> this music is bloated, leads up and crap. You know, like uh, you know, it's, it's if you if you don't have that mentality, like you know, there's lounge versions of these songs, like just literally like Muzaki. Like if you take like I've literally heard like elevator versions of these songs of like Last Cr or not Last Cross or someone uh, Skulls. Skulls. Have uh, you heard that? Yeah. yeah that and great. um <laughs> and like, but those arrangements are great because that just the melodies of the songs are fantastic yeah and to me that shows something that's like that next level and that's of course danzig is so popular and i mean he basically made everything he did a successful thing um you know like the misfits even when before he was a as famous as he is now you know just even the idea of copywriting all the stuff and being so ahead of anybody else with the right. idea of being able to market yourself and you just light years ahead of everyone else and thinking like that and he went on to write like uh, like stuff for like Roy Orbison and all these other people. Yeah. And just shows that he like really understood the craft. And I think that those, you know, just even people. He wasn't just some dumb punk, you know, who was like just trying to put music out there and just not caring who took it or did what with it. Like, I think he, he like legitimately cares about what he's written about. He wants to keep it. He wants his name attached to it, which I, I don't think you see a lot in that area of music at least when when you're talking about like revolutionary punk bands or anything in the alternative scene like that a lot of them just kind of like threw shit out there <laughs> yeah and a lot to a lot of people the message is more important than the music yeah and i don't think that was the case i don't think it's ever been the case with danzig because he's done so many different kinds of music so if he was just like the idea of the music is to him of what he can do is like experimenting and you know he's even sabotaged his own career in a lot of ways to do that yeah and so sometimes uh, his image <laughs> yeah well Oh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and he's, but he's also like, I think it also, like, that's a great, it's probably one of the best parts of his skill set. But I think also, of course, the Misfits, even in the beginning, had like 19 members and like all these different people who came in and out. Yeah. And get, and then pretty much every single time somebody talks about, oh, why did this person leave the original Misfits? It's like, oh, they fought with Danzig. And so I think that th there's a fine line he, well, I mean, he uh, crossed many times yeah. of where is uh, your art. You know, can you have these successful relationships with people while also creating this art? And a lot of times it was no. Um, yep. <laughs> but he did manage to get a lot of stuff done. Anyway, I just thought that was important. That's why it doesn't seem like I'm probably being as hard on this. If anything, it could be like, if you don't like this type of music, it might not convince you because it is 
still aggressive, there's short songs or whatever. If you're looking yeah. for an exploratory, super long journey, you can go on with these songs. It's probably not the album. Yeah, wrong band. Um, this band is, like, you want to have some fun, you want to have some energetic songs that, especially on this album, are feel very upbeat and um yeah like i was saying i was like out of all the misfits albums this is like the one that like when i hear it i'm like all right time to start a mosh pit like immediately it's like let's hit the floor come on go (laughs) it's it's that type of music and um it's great i think walk among us is probably my favorite record from them from this era yeah because it just gets everything right and even the next album we're gonna see it falters a little bit yeah um but anyway that is a walk among us it's awesome you go buy it it's been re- reissued a billion times yep by the way go look up all the album cover stuff it's hilarious how yeah. much they just ripped off it's hilarious oh yeah absolutely <laughs> so cool all right cameron i've had it i'm over it i'm done with walking i just that's a dumb name for an album title i'd rather have a name of an album relating to some kind of planet and a denomination of time. Would it happen to be a planet that we live on as like a Absolutely. Maybe Earth? That would be, yes. And a time frame as in AD? Yes. So you're probably thinking of Earth AD. Absolutely. <laughs> 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 All right. So after the release of Walk Among Us, the band actually did some touring. They did a national tour uh, with Necros. They decided to start laying down the tracks for the new stuff. They were arrested in New Orleans. For uh, grave robbing. For grave robbing. Yep. <laughs> um, to, uh, was it Marie Laveau? Yeah, a voodoo practitioner. Um, yeah, they were they were arrested, and I think all of them got bailed out except for the drummer, if I'm correct, because they didn't have enough money yep. to bail him out. It's just great. Um, and then, so that was, obviously didn't go well, and then they went back, and then that's actually when um, Evil Live was originally released. It was in between this time. Oh, okay. Um, it, it was the EP version, though, not the full version. Right. So... For Earth AD, this album is definitely seen as the end of the Misfits. I mean, it is the end of the Misfits yeah. in a lot of ways, but uh, it was originally supposed to be another EP, whatever, but then it was extended into a full album because they added a whole bunch of other stuff in there. So it's the technically, the I think the full title is Earth AD slash Wolf's Blood is the name of it. Yeah. And then every single digital outlet says something different. It's a, Yeah, I know a lot of it says like... Earth AD, Die, Die, My Darling is yeah. another one. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's because they added in the single, or like, yeah, for that, uh, yeah. for Die, Die, My Darling. Um, so what, we're, what I'm going to be looking at here is the CD cassette version of it, which is like, most people see is that's like the official track yeah. listing and stuff. We'll overlap on the songs and stuff. It was just, again, released through Plan 9. Uh, there was also a deal for Walk Among Us. There was also a deal that I think they had with Slash Records that, you know, this is a previous album, Walk Among Us. Right. Um, where they had like some kind of Italian deal or something like that. But then it was super sour and hmm. all this stuff. It went really bad. But then uh, Robo is playing drums on this one. And before the album was even released, he left the band. Uh, so it's uh, really great. The cover for this one, because we talked about the cover on the last one, yeah. was done by Mad Mark Rude. He apparently spent 300 hours drawing the cover. He did a great job with it. I mean, what an iconic album cover. So good. So many buttons have been made of the... I mean, that's what I think of, like, someone's got a Misfits button, it's this album. Like, uh, it is, like, nine out of ten times, it's this album on their jacket. Yeah, and he did... A, the artist, uh, Mark Will, did, like, a whole bunch of other, like, punk art and, like, things for, uh, like, split EPs yeah. and some Ramon stuff. And even, I think he did, like, the Offspring's first album and... This is another. It's got the similar color scheme of the purple and green uh, for oh, like yeah. Walk Among Us, like the original release of Walk mm-hmm. Among Us. The the purple and green seems to be their their colors. Yep. And uh, yeah. Oh, the band would break up two months a- before it was released. Okay, cool. Of course, Robo had an argument with Danzig, left the surprise, band. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the whole thing about this was that Danzig was kind of moving on, t- trying to take the steps towards what becomes Sam Hain, the next band, which is um, really what people consider death rock. But he kind of reined in some of those songs and was like, okay, well, I'll turn them in Misfits and try and make the Misfits work. Um, and then we have Earth AD. And that's kind of what led to this. So we still have the same thing, Jerry, Doyle, uh, Danzig, and then we have Robo on drums. And Robo, of course, Robo from Black Flag. This was after they kicked out the last drummer. Yeah, this album sounds like a Black Flag album. It, it is like a spooky Black Flag album. Is way like more the best way hardcore. I can describe it. Yeah, it, it is a hard... I mean, like, the Walk Among Us is punk, 
Earth AD is hardcore punk. Like, yeah. there's a big difference between the two. Yeah. I think it's actually a great, like, tool to be like, oh, what's the difference between punk and hardcore? Listen to Walk Among Us. Listen to Earth AD. You'll hear the differences. That's really the thing about it, too, is it, it really helped usher in this new, I mean, a lot of things for hardcore punk. Not only the kind of, like, people are like, oh, the Misfits did this, and the song and the album became so big over time that people are like, look at it as, like, one of the templates for hardcore in general, let alone the art there's so many yeah, covers that just are like, just rip off Earth AD, or they're ripping off an album that ripped off Earth AD yeah. <laughs> that they don't even know that that's you what was... You can follow the lineage all the way back to Earth AD. Yeah. Anyway, Earth AD, as an album, way heavier. Yeah. Hard, I mean, hardcore, heavy. Fast. Fast. Uh, <laughs> like, even the opening, opening song, title track, Earth AD, it just, it hits you. Like, the it, there's like a 10 second intro, and then it is woes. <laughs> yeah, it's, well, what's crazy about this too is when we're talking about like heavier or more raw sound, the production is actually, I think, better. I agree. But this way it sounds is way more intentionally less poppy. Um, yeah. So you have like the vocals on this album are way more buried in the mix. Yep. Whereas before they were pushed so high in Walk Among Us to have those like, you know, where you could sing along to skulls and stuff. True. It was like Not- Dan- Dan's ex- <laughs> like singing right in your ear. This yeah. one, it's very, he's like across the room. <laughs> yeah. It's way more about like the, you know, instead of being like, whoa, you know, where you're like running around the room, it's yep. more like just, it's like, dad, you're just like, <laughs> just like banging your head and going, just let's right. start a fight. <laughs> yeah. That's way more what this album is like. And it works in that way. But if you're coming from, if you're like, man, walk among us. Like, you, you listen to this for the first time, you hear all the whole bunch of songs from there, you're like, yeah, man, I want more of that. This is not it. There's some of it, but it's not It's not it. Um, it's, uh, it's as if someone took the gain knob and just cranked it from the last album. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you have songs like Devil Lock on here. Yeah. Super heavy. Yep. It's just mean sounding. It just... Yeah. Like, the other songs, the old songs were aggressive. This is like, I'm angry. Yeah. Like, um, and we also have Mommy Can I Go Out and Kill Tonight on this album oh, as yeah. well, except for this one isn't live. Um, and yeah. like I said- And I, only certain versions of it too. Yeah, I I kind of prefer the live version from uh, Walk Among Us mm-hmm. I'll just, a t- just a touch more than the Earth AD version, but that's just me. Yeah. Um, but it's still a great, great version of that song. A Green Hell, again, yeah. what the hell? <laughs> what is he saying? What is he saying? <laughs> what is he saying? <laughs> Uh, you have a way more metal guitar tone and yeah. sound to it. It's just like the 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 chugging type and That's like kind of what I think of when I think of like Doyle's guitar tone. Like I think this is like the origin, the real origin of like Doyle's sound. Oh yeah, especially like with Earth AD, like yeah. coming off right up. That's like you hear that, and he's basically been doing that his entire career now. Yeah, but yeah, like Green Hell, you did, I almost hear like thrash in that like yeah. those like when it does the open kind of like the dan, 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 like this the chords yeah like i hear that way more i'm like definitely metallica heard it, well, that yeah, it's it's stripped down in certain ways um like i don't know some of the guitar riffs is like almost it's just like two notes <laughs> yeah. like it's, it's not as melodic it's just kind of straight straight hardcore thrash yeah absolutely uh also you have blood feast mm-hmm. like <sighs> good song one of danzig's best vocals on the album yeah. he's really just like going for it the thing about danzig is he never really it didn't really ever seem like he wasn't that confident of a singer mm-hmm. which i think is even when he was way rougher uh as far as the control of his voice uh, that's why you love him is yeah. like he's so confident and you're just like he's like total rock star yeah like, you're like he owns it but that song i'm just like yeah man this totally danzig prime. to the, to the yeah. <laughs> i mean it's like super danzig of course you have another like super aggressive hellhound all this stuff on this album just like with walk among us you kind of get a, a tone for the album yeah and it's kind of what it, does each song do you get these like really cool pulsing songs like die die my darling which just kind of has these like yeah stat these guitar stabs that just go on the entire song yeah which are really really cool and like they're still heavy it doesn't like take away from anything it's just kind of a different style Exactly. Yeah, That's a perfect example of even having like a big catchy course in a lot of ways, but it's just different in the way that it's done from just the previous album. Yeah. Or like, even a lot of the rest of the songs on this yeah. album is like oh, very different. <laughs> yeah. And you can see like, that's a perfect example of how it seems tacked on. Like we're yeah. where like, Oh, we have this, these songs and it's like, well, that was a good single. Like you should just throw that on there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, of course that song is super classic. Metallica's done it. Yep. In fact, the Metallica versions, in some ways, probably was more popular for a while. It and, was, yeah. Or, like, especially helped lead people into the Misfits. I'm sure that paycheck was great. I mean, oh, like, yeah. there's a great story about 
uh, something I want to talk about too is like a little bit of the business stuff for this. So like, I know people look down like, oh, when a new band, a bit or super super huge band covers like a punk song, people are like, oh, screw that, you know, yep. like whatever. <laughs> um, you know, because uh, what, what do they think? It's like even if they're showing their roots and being like, yeah, man, we really love like a band members. You're like, I absolutely love the song. It's great. And uh, Guns and Roses one, I that's a really funny one to me when they. Um, they did the Dam's New Rose. Mm-hmm. It's a pretty good cover. I mean, you yeah. know, and uh, they. I mean, I know Duff has like huge punk roots. Yeah, and yeah, um, but they also did the same. Yeah, you know, they also did um, Attitude with Duff singing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't, wait, did he sing New? Rose? No, I think I don't know who sang New Rose. Anyway, I didn't listen to that album. Yeah, but, like, <laughs> but, but uh, the version of Attitude's not terrible. That's either. Pretty it's pretty good. Yeah, they, you know, Duff Duff's got it. Seattle. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, he was a drummer for a Seattle band called The Farts, which if you're into punk and you haven't checked out The Farts, go listen to them. It's Farts with a Z at the end. Make sure you get that. Of course. Yeah, so <laughs> make sure you get the Z at the end. Um, like, I don't know what the deal with when they licensed the Misfit song, Attitude, but I do know that with, with the new Rose, when they did that song, it was a really big deal because then they got... Like we're actually able to pay. That's probably like the biggest paycheck the damn ever got. Yeah, was like licensing a cover because you know they have writing credits on it, and uh, that's like that probably was very helpful to the key. yeah, like you know to get that paycheck. Probably not for Danzig as much as it was, you know. But then who knows? Danzig probably got the whole paycheck because it's Danzig. We'll talk. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk some more about like some of the le- legal stuff that happened after yeah. this album was released. But um, oh by the way, I want to mention before we get on to that is Wolf's Blood. This song is just Danzig's A Werewolf, The Song. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thought that was a good note. But this album, just a great send off for the Misfits. So we looked at essentially three studio albums, right? Mm-hmm. All radically different, right? Very. Yeah. But the public perception of the Misfits, especially since you see the logo everywhere, it's in every single store. Every hot topic you walk into. <laughs> every, I mean, even outside of that, like yeah. Forever 21 or some crap. Yeah. Also, um, I see Misfits logos in like really, really strange places, which sometimes is kind of cool to see and then there's other times where I'm like, I know you don't listen to them. Yeah. <laughs> I know you don't listen I to them. I try to not be that grumpy person. I try not to every either, but it's a little hard for me. <laughs> every once in a while, I'm like, oh, okay. Like, <laughs> anyway, uh, to me, that's really crazy because uh, that's why I like doing these episodes of Gothcast is because you get to really like hone in on what is different about these albums because even to people who are somewhat, you know, get Collection 1 or Collection 2, like the greatest hits collections of yep. them, they think The Misfits is like this one sound. Right. You know, because if you take hybrid moments and last caress off a of static age and then you combine it with some stuff from walk among us and then like some of the stuff up here it sounds just like one one cohesive thing, thing right but then you take it apart add all the other songs for each release yeah, and it sounds the, the misfits sound is really these three albums mashed together it's bits and pieces from all of them that a lot of people just like the general perception is like oh that's the misfit sound but yeah. it was really interesting like doing a deep dive being like oh these sounds came from that album and they are so vastly different from each yeah. other if you really pick them apart and you know so much more of the rhythm stuff where it's like wow static age is way slower and way more of like a jazz kind of influence for the drums from the drummer Very and like surfy yeah, yeah. And all the surf stuff and it's just like that's why i like doing these episodes because you get to pick apart like these are three radically different albums with extremely different identities, but it's like everyone's just like, "What's missing?" Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> it's like, and gah, 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 you know, it's just like, <laughs> and you just, and you listen to these, and you're like, "This is a huge spectrum of music they've covered yeah. in the in a very short amount of time." And it's just it's crazy to me how like whenever you do these, you, you're able to like see just the differences are so much more obvious. But, you know, like, I was in this forever. And then you're like, then you can pick out, like, there's so much more whenever you actually sit down and, yep. like, listen to these. But, um, yeah, that's Earth AD. And uh, that was the deal with this album. So, Earth AD is released December of 1983. Ah. Yeah, it uh, didn't go great. Uh, <laughs> so, October 29th, 1983, they played their annual Halloween performance uh, in Detroit Hall with Necros. They had... Because Robo quit, they needed a new drummer, so they selected Brian Damage uh, of Genocide and Verbal Abuse. However, he became drunk before the show and couldn't play. After several songs, Doyle escorted him off the stage, <laughs> <laughs> and the Necros drummer filled in for the remainder of the performance. And then at the end of the show, 
Danzig announced that it would be the band's final show. And then when they went to Lodi, then they just split up. You know, normally I talk about some of the history with bands, especially if we do part two, like there's going to be a whole lead in to do the whole grave stuff. Yeah. So I thought I'd talk about some of the stuff that happened after this. Um, it's kind of a an interesting tidbits yeah. section because the Misfits are very interesting because they just... There's a lot of good history there. <laughs> well, they kept they kept going and like it's it's rare that, band, you know, a lot of times you're like, what are, they, what are these bands up to? I don't know, like they... They didn't play music or they went to this band or whatever, but the the Misfits kept going. So yeah. it's, it's even more interesting, cause especially since Danzig kept going and Danzig had platinum hits. And so uh, Jerry and Doyle went to go work back at their father's machine shop. Jerry, he had, he got married, had a daughter, became super serious about his Christian faith, even regretted some of the things he had done with the Misfits previously, I guess. Hmm. That's weird. I guess I get it. Um, in 1987, him and Doyle formed Chris the Conqueror, a Christian heavy metal band with barbarian imagery. Um, very interesting. So I did, in fact, listen to that album. Oh, it's, did you? So it was never officially released. There was a whole album recorded. It was never officially released, Weird. but it did leak. Okay. And so you so, found the leaked version of that? And some of the songs... Is it good? Uh, <laughs> it's, it's okay. It's okay. Okay. It's more like in tune with like just 80s heavy metal. Oh, uh, um, okay. It's not saying there's not some stuff, but then that really led into... Literally some of the songs are... F- just note for note, the Graves era Misfits. Weird. Okay. And in fact, Doctor Chud is yeah. a drummer. Oh, really? Yeah. Hey. Well, so look it's at like that. it's really what like all that work led up to what became the new Misfits, which I'll talk about next episode. Of course, when Daisy became super popular and he's going platinum with Mother and all that oh. stuff, it obviously was people were so interested in finding all the old Misfits stuff, even if it was out of print and became super collectible and highly, highly, highly bootlegged, especially with the tape era. Huge thing. So a lot of those, even the really old, like this vintage cassette, it's probably still bootlegged. Anyway, Metallica, they did an EP called the 590 ADP where they did a whole bunch of covers and stuff in 87. Of course, Guns N' Roses covered Attitude in 93. There was a lot of compilations, of course, Collection 1 and 2. There was Legacy of Brutality, yeah. which of course I talked about, like, so you didn't have to pay royalties and all this stuff. Yeah. The point is there was this huge, huge thing about royalties with this. So only it contacted Danzig about a portion of royalties from album sales. Started a huge chain of events lawsuit. Well, that's kind of where you found out that all the Misfits material had been credited to Danzig, a songwriter. Yeah. So that's why he went with Legacy Brutality. He just took off the performances like, well, I'm a songwriter, so I don't have to pay you anything. Yeah, and I so, know on like a lot of digital releases, it'll be like the Misfits, comma, Glenn Danzig. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And so eventually, like the whole thing was supposed to be that oil and he was saying like, well, we contributed this portion of it, like 20 to 35% or something. It just became this whole thing. And in 1995, so it's years of litigation, they reached an out-of-court settlement that allowed only and Doyle to perform and record as the Misfits and then shared merchandising rights with Danzig. And then there was going to be like a whole release too. Uh, that's like the 12 hits from hell that was going to mm-hmm. be released. And they just couldn't, agree negotiate. on the yeah. art and all this stuff and so it um they just put it on the shelf yeah so they're just like nope uh they're over it and this also came back to bite danzig in the butt later because obviously jerry only is a super super good businessman as far as like logos and getting the merchandise into stuff yeah. and, and just good merchandise i mean misfits stuff is awesome merchandise i'm wearing a misfits tee yeah, right now it looks great <laughs> it's awesome um and that's one of the things I think that really benefit is that they just make cool merchandise. Yeah. Like the colors, like, I mean, everything. And so there was, again, 2014, there was a lawsuit with, Dan- again, Danzig brought to the court saying... Um, man, nothing says punk like a lawsuit, right? <laughs> oh, man. Well, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, and, like, and a $200 ticket to see the original Misfits. Oh, there you- oh God, <laughs> don't get me started on that. Yeah, when they, when they reunited. <laughs> I remember that happened. Yeah, put your phone in a bag. You can't video record me or else you're kicked out. Um, yeah, I met, I met someone at a show who actually got to go to that concert and I was just like, how much you pay for your tickets? And they were like, yeah, it was like 200 bucks. I'm like, that's, oh, man. So why would you do that? They didn't even get good seats either. There were some tickets that were more than that. So you could actually, I think to go in the pit, it was like double the price of that. Oh, and I was God. like, they were like, yeah, we were stuck in seats. We paid like 200 bucks for these tickets. I'm like, why? Why would you do why? that? I mean, I love the Misfits, but it's not worth it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't love them that much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, man. But uh, yeah, Danzig brought another lawsuit in 2014 saying that like, it was this really weird one where 
it was like that Jerry only had done these deals with, especially like Hot Topic was a big part of it, where it's like had done these deals with these huge franchises. Something like where he had told them that like he shouldn't do deals with Danzig's merchandise or something. Um, but then he was trying to get a portion of the profits as well. There's this whole thing. Weird. And um, the judge sided with only saying that it was made clear in the previous case that you specifically made this deal so you wouldn't have to be involved in the misfits anymore. And like, and that was granted to you. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and so then they ruled against Danzig, but I, I don't know. I think the idea was that like all this misfit stuff is in there. So Jerry only is not wording it in a way where they're not taking Danzig merchandise or something. That's yeah. what I gathered from Weird. what they wrote. I don't know if that's exactly what it was saying, but again, like Danzig lost that lawsuit and now we still get to have, you know, misfits drink cozies. <laughs> so, so it's a um I know the holidays are past but you know all those misfit stocking yeah, stuffers right you there got. Yeah. You, know, you got this crimson ghost plushies there you go they, oh by the way they do have figures from re like make a whole bunch of those you know it's like 80s style figures oh yeah they did uh one for earth ad oh did they really yeah oh, it's that's a crimson great. ghost I know you can buy like the uh the crimson ghost mask that's like licensed by misfits or something like that yeah and that was like a big thing yeah uh, when i was like first getting into the misfits and i was like they have a mask for this, this is so cool <laughs> yeah right they also have a um a cool uh, we forgot to mention it when we did the earth ad specifically but yeah. there's a like a cat i showed you it's the resin cast oh, yeah. was... of like a plaque that you could get that was earth ad and that was like painted and it was like crazy um but yeah so it's like there's tons of merchandise today from the misfits i mean pretty much endless amounts of merchandise yep. uh, there was action figures and all this kind of stuff and i think a lot of it came around I'm still waiting for the cereal <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the right. cereal yeah little crimson ghosts uh, and we're gonna see that especially with the graves era that they were actually in a whole bunch of movies and cameos and stuff and um the the merchandising stuff was a really big deal it's how a lot of people know the misfits a lot of people like they don't know they don't really know the band but they know the logo it's kind of interesting they're like oh yeah i've seen that before and i'm like yeah it's misfits of course well that was incredibly smart because it's you could tell that jerry only saw the worth in that because today without that marketing nobody would know it all you know yeah. so there's a lot of bands who have really famous really awesome cool designs and stuff and they printed it for like 10 months and it was right. like and they toured but they never kept it out there or they never really did anything outside of it or yeah or, or only giving... was really good at just like keeping keeping it going yeah I think that's like it's a great way to capture like the misfits like they kept it going no matter yeah. how they could they kept it going yeah and i have like 10 different misfit shirts that are all different it's not like i it's like i have a dad and my dad one i have like a whole bunch of different variations of each one of them right. and that's what happens is you see one you're like that's a cool one i don't have that one yeah and like you know and, oh that's a cool one i, I don't have that one yeah. you know <laughs> and so they're, they're just really smart with that it's just a testament to the fact that he went and fought for the rights like, hey, I also want a performance band, but we'll share the merchandising because, hey, you're doing Danzig. Like, what do you need the Misfits stuff for? You know, like, we'll do the Misfits stuff because you're not doing it. And, right. And, like, that is super smart. And so as much as you want to criticize only, I mean, you know, you can in a lot of ways, if especially if you don't line up with thinking that's a good idea. It's like, yeah. it should have just died. It should have been done. The only Misfits shirt should have been DIY. <laughs> you know, like, I, I see the... I see the point in that as well. Yeah, I see um, it both, both ways. But uh, as far as that stuff, I mean, just from a business standpoint, that's incredibly forward thinking. I think that lawsuit was going to 1995. It's like, we haven't released any or recorded any Misfits songs in 12 years. Right. And this lawsuit's still going on and we're still fighting for it. Yeah. And, like, that's smart. Anyway, that's the Misfits Danzig era. They have reunited and stuff. Maybe we'll talk about that some more and some other nah. thing. But uh, Misfits Part Five. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah right. <laughs> Danzig again. <laughs> uh, but anyway, this has uh, been Gathcast Episode Fifty Seven, The Misfits. You can find us wherever this podcast is, and you have listened to it. Also, you want to check out an awesome album by an awesome band with the two people who are sitting in this room. You know, oh, you're like thinking, I want to get it on cassette. You can do that you can too. Do nice cherry red cassette. Nice too. cherry red cassette. Dr. Sanders, Patch Overlap. You can find it on Bandcamp. Also, we have the music video, Grey Matter Trial and stuff. We've got some new singles that are going to be coming up. Anyway, just trying to let you guys know that is the band we play in. Super awesome. Trying to get you some great music out there because 
you know what else fits in with the misfits dr sanders album because you know why they're both good <laughs> both good both great great music <laughs> too heavy-handed <laughs> <laughs> just a just a touch <laughs> anyway speaking of classic albums um <laughs> All right, that has been Gathcast. You can follow all the social media stuff, blah, 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 yada, yada. Leave reviews on iTunes. Stay tuned for the next episode. We're going to be looking at some other stuff as we always do. This podcast will never die for whatever reason. (laughs) (laughs) Just like the Misfits, it'll never die. Never die. (laughs) Fought for those licensing rights. Uh, Okay, and make sure get out there. And you know what you got to do, Cameron? Stay spooky. No, you got to stay spooky. I say that. Oh, okay, whoa. Yeah, stay spooky. Stay spooky.